church today. Amen. Amen. How old is she now? Eleven days. Eleven days old. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter nine. So we've got uh, four points to our outline here today. Uh, we see the problem of spiritual immaturity and powerlessness that the disciples were displaying here. Uh -huh. Of course, uh, the disciples are being trained by Jesus or having this three years of on-the-job training, Amen. three years of discipleship. And we've learned that it would take you about three years to disciple 12 knuckleheads. Our discipleship usually lasts about 12 weeks. And, uh, and uh, sometimes with schedules, you know, it can be a little longer. It could be 12 weeks. It could be nine months. But uh, we believe in discipleship. Jesus believed in discipleship. Amen. Amen. Sit down with somebody one-on-one -on -one and take them through the basics of what it means to follow Jesus. And um, so as a part of that training, there are no doubt, uh, like we just read, they were trying to help this fella cast a devil out of this kid, but uh, lo and behold, nothing was happening. And of course, having them Jewish scribes there to kind of tease them and tantalize them and argue with them, wasn't helping anything. <laughs> and there's a crowd, quite a crowd assembling there, quite a ruckus being made. So uh, it gets everybody's attention, amen? Amen. So number one, spiritual immaturity belittles and shames as it is the disciples here because we see the crowds were gathered, the scribes and teachers of the law. Uh, they're asking them a bunch of questions and the crowds rushed up to Jesus. Uh, when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them and straightway all the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed and running to him saluted him. And he asked the scribes what what question ye with them? Of course, he wants to know what they're talking to them about. And of course, Jesus never asked a question, but he always knew the answer. Mm -hmm. It was almost always a rhetorical question, amen? Mm -hmm. Because in asking them, then that puts them on the spot. And the mm -hmm. coolest thing about Jesus, of course, is to watch him when he deals with the authorities, because he always answers our questions with a question. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, a great yeah. lesson to learn if you can learn. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> And learn how to do it. So Jesus drew attention uh, from the humiliated disciples. Amen. Yeah. And we see the cause of the embarrassment. And one of the multitude answered and said, "Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit." So that means that the spirit manifests itself in this boy because he couldn't speak. And uh, the Bible speaks of different kinds of spirits and how often they will manifest themselves in some, some type of a physical ailment or disability. Yeah. Uh, the Bible speaks of a person having a spirit of lunacy, right. which means that they had seizures. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they had monthly seizures with the moon. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called lunacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Luke and goes into great details to show us how whereas uh, most people think it's just a natural ailment, surprise surprise, Jesus would often cast the spirit out of someone and they wouldn't have seizures no more. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Bible speaks of someone with a foul spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bible speaks of someone having an unclean spirit. Right. Uh, the Bible even speaks of a familiar spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just assume uh, because uh, you know they go to some seance somewhere and uh, somebody hears some weird voice in the air and you go, hello Timmy, I'm your Uncle Ralph. And then the other devil says, no, no, it's a man, it's older than that. Hello Timmy, I'm your Uncle Ralph. You know? yeah. and so uh, they get fooled thinking it's his Uncle Ralph, you know. Right. Sounds right. just like it. And uh, but it's really just an evil spirit pretending to be someone familiar to the person so that they're deceived. Right. 
Yeah. And this has happened to some of my best friends. Like I've told you, all my people are from Kentucky. So uh, they hope people are very superstitious. Oh, yeah. And when you live in them hills very long, you see a lot of funny things you can't explain. Yeah. And uh, you don't know how to deal with them. So you just kind of fall back on your own uh, old wives' tales and go with it. But yet, there should reach a point in your spiritual maturity, especially if you claim to love the Bible and the Word of God, that you get beyond these right. childish things. Right. Uh -huh. uh, a good preacher friend of mine that I was working with told me how one of our dear friends, a big old boy, about six foot six, 300 pounds, he was driving his Volkswagen to work one foggy morning and he hit a semi head on. And uh, the state cop that come up on the scene first said Johnny was sitting there in that Volkswagen all crushed, saying, touch me, Jesus, touch me, Jesus. And in a little while, Jesus touched him. Amen. Took him over the glory. Well, my buddy was shaving. He's sitting at the bathroom sink shaving. A couple days after this, he's thinking about Johnny. And he, you know, he had some of that shaving cream, you know, in a Noxzema medicated comfort shave, you know. A, right. It's a whole lot of volume in a little tiny space. Right, right, right. He dropped that thing in the sink and somehow it, it, it opened up on him. <coughs> and sprayed his name on the mirror. J E M Jesse. <laughs> sprayed on his mirror. And he's, he said he kind of chuckled. He says, is that you, Johnny? <clears throat> See, that's his first thought. Right. Mm. He's being visited by a spirit. And his first thought is he's being visited by a familiar spirit. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, though, no. See, that wasn't a good thing to say. Right. Hey, Amen. As far as I'm concerned, it's a evil spirit yeah. pretending yeah. to be a familiar that's spirit. That's right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Believe me, I knew Johnny. I knew how Johnny loved the Lord. Johnny would be hanging around just to write Jesse's name in foam on a mirror. Or something. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Amen. Like Paul said, to be absent the body, he was present with the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord's got plenty of angels. He didn't need to send Johnny down and give Jesse his name on a mirror somewhere. But now down the hill, folk, they're, they're full of stories like that. And it's sad. Because the truth is, they're so caught big and superstitious and nervous. When it comes to spirits, mm. and uh, especially if you're going to be in a ministry, you got to get over that. Because yeah. greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Right, right, man. And even if you are dealing with the devil himself, in First John, the Bible tells us that you know that you know the evil one can't even touch you. That's what it says. Right? If you're born of God yeah. and keeping His commandments. That's what now, if you're born of God, but you're backslid and doing things you shouldn't be doing, you're in trouble because God can turn you over to Satan for the destruction of your flesh yeah. that yeah. your spirit may be saved, like you said in 1 Corinthians 5. Amen. Amen. But if you're living right and going by the Bible, you're saved and you're going by the Bible and obeying the Lord best you know how, man, even the, the, the wicked one can't touch you. That's it. So you can move with some authority. That's right. You know, this same pastor... We had a girl in our church that was coming to our church. I would pick her up on the bus with all the other kids, a teenager. Then, of all things, they decided the girls wanted to have a sleepover in the church on a Halloween night. Well, it's fine. We ain't superstitious. Right. Except this girl got over into the school facility that we had that was a separate building than the sanctuary, and she tried to hang herself. And uh, some of you heard me tell the story because when her girlfriend <laughs> just grabbed a hold of her legs and yanked her down, woo! <laughs> I mean, here she's got a belt around her neck. But she broke that leather strap which she yanked on her and got her down. And pretty soon she she come to. But when she come to, uh, the youth director that was there that night, he didn't know how to deal with her because she was talking uh, you know, like third person with a, with a different voice. Well, well, you might too if you had a fell around your neck and somebody yanked it off. But 
girl that so he put her he put her uh, in his car and took her home and just about 10 minutes before getting to her house because you got to realize when you live in Kentucky you live far from everything and you're always <laughs> right so just before they finally got her home about 10 minutes before they got her home she came to herself and she turned to her girlfriend and said uh, what are we doing in this car she said, what do you mean, what are we doing in this car? She said, well, I don't remember getting in this car. Where, where are we going? She said, we're going home. She said, why? And then, of course, her friend unloaded on her. You're trying to hang her down. That's right. <laughs> you know, she started going off on it. <laughs> so it was so sad. Because uh, previous to this, I had, give, I had been given this girl a lot of Bible to memorize. Mm -hmm. Uh, she had had some trouble with these things that were bothering her. And uh, she was really getting the victory, but then we hadn't seen her in a while. She hadn't been in her Bible. In fact, she'd been put in a foster home for a little while. So she got away from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And it was so sad because I talked with that pastor, and he said, We are not picking that girl up anymore. And I said, What do you mean we're not picking her up anymore? If there's ever a time she needed our help, it's now. That's right. 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 What's she going to do when she goes to school on Monday and all of her friends at school are saying, hey, what are you doing, Irene? You know. Right, right. And if she didn't even have any conscious memory of what she tried to do, I mean, how's she going to handle that? I know a lot of people that have gone crazy worried about why they're going crazy. You know what I'm talking about. And I told him, I said, man, if there's ever a time we need to be there for that girl, it's now. We've got all the answers. Right. But my instruction was, because of his inadequacies, oh no, we're not going to pick her up. Anymore. She can count on us to throw her under the bus. Right. Because we're not so sure we can handle it. Sure, we can handle it. We got the King James Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't handle a little old devil bothering somebody? No. Right. Amen, brother. But this is the real world I'm telling you about. Just, right. just in case you weren't aware of it, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Right. Amen. So we see uh, mm -hmm. one of the multitude said, Well, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. Now, that's another word for a, he has a convulsion. Mm -hmm. You know, often when a person has a convulsion, they may cry out a little bit. There seems They seem to be in some pain sometimes. You know, sometimes when people have convulsions, their eyes will roll up in their head and they're biting on their tongue because they're uh, having a convulsion. And you got to watch that they don't swallow their tongue. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, so there's things that need to be done. So we see this afflicted child, number one. We see the weak faith and a concern of a, <laughs> a weak faith of a concerned father. Amen. Uh, and we see a powerless ministry of the disciples. And wheresoever he takes them, he tears them. Now this is a great point too. See, often the reason somebody's continually trying to commit suicide is because there's a devil. Right. And uh, it's not so much maybe that the person is so consumed with the suicide as much as there's one person wants you dead, and that's the devil. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You can't do anything for God if you're dead. You can't be any kind of, kind of a testimony for God if you're dead. You can't right. do the kingdom of heaven any good if you're dead. So the devil wants you dead. That's right. Yeah. Amen. He wants you dead so that you won't get saved mm -hmm. if you're lost. And if you're saved, he wants you dead because, you know, you could get somebody else saved. So you have a real enemy in the devil. That's right. Since we just had this big funeral here this week, uh, it's important to note too that sometimes people get mad at the devil, at the at the Lord for, right. for there being a funeral and for there being dead. That's mm -hmm. right. Now I hate that there's such a thing as death too, and yeah. but the Bible's clear that the wages of sin is bad. It's just a result of sin. That's yeah. right. So if there's anybody to blame, it's the devil and it's it's, it's Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Right. But don't be blaming the Lord. Yeah, that's right. The Lord clearly gave Adam a, Adam a heads up, and he didn't take advantage of it at all. Amen? It ain't the Lord's fault. It's sin's fault. But I'm saying there's a great truth here 
that um, sometimes you got to recognize the Bible's pretty clear that uh, it's the devil that causes people to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says over there that no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it. Now if that verse is true and I believe it is. Amen. Then how can you say a man uh, hated himself so much he'd blow his head off or commit suicide? Right. Amen. You let the devil step into that man's life. Yes, sir. The devil makes sure he offs that guy. That verse says, No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but cherishes it and nourishes it. Amen? Amen. So you'd, you'd really get a, a more balanced look at things if you understood that this is a great truth. And here Jesus is, this, this story is backing it up. Since this guy was a little fella, he had trouble with this devil in him. And oftentimes, as he said, it would do different things to him and cause him to react in diverse manners. Wheresoever he taketh him, in other words, a boy don't necessarily end up where he wanted to go. <laughs> I don't know how many town drunks you know, but I've met a lot of them and talked to them. And they've told me many a time that they wake up from a drunk and not know how they got there. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And there's a reason why the Indians call that hooch spirits, amen? Yeah, that's right. Because uh, it gets a hold of them, and uh, they wake up, and they don't know how they got there. But it will control them, amen? Right. Just like having a spirit in you controlling you, and you don't have any consciousness of it. He taketh him, he teareth him, he and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth. Oh, man, that's almost like a wild dog or something, isn't it? And I've heard all kinds of those stories I could share, but we better not. Mm -hmm. And pineth away. I love, here's an old King James word. Oh, I love this word. And pineth away. Isn't that an interesting yes, word? Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> and pineth away. Now, uh, this is just an old Anglo-Saxon word. Thank God for an English Bible. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's an old Anglo-Saxon word. It comes from a, a root word of pinen that means the language be in pain. Can you almost see the word pain in pining or pining? <laughs> if you've ever been to the mental hospital, as I have, uh, you've seen people in pain, and you've seen people pining away. I mean, I'll never forget watching this one lad, man, he, he's slapping his forehead as hard as he can hit it. <gasps> biting the back of his hand as hard as he can bite it. Man, it's callous from years of biting on it. And uh, because he's feeling something, you can't you ain't feeling, but he's right. feeling it, man. And uh, it's so sad to see people uh, suffering from different um, you know, mental ailments, especially. So uh, he's trying to explain to Jesus, man, this thing's got a hold of my boy, and it just, man, it, it just works him over. I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. <laughs> Now, is it because the Word of God is powerless? No. <laughs> is it because uh, uh, God doesn't answer the disciples' prayers? No, He definitely has answered many of the disciples' prayers. Secondly, we see spiritual immaturity grieves the Lord. Amen. He answered him and saith, O faithless generation, now, the Bible's really much on the exercising of your faith. See, uh, faith is like a muscle. You may have it, but if you don't exercise it, what good's it going to do? Yes. Amen. You're going to be weak. It's got to be exercised. you got to put it in gear. As your pastor, the Bible says, who's faith follow? I better be showing you how to live by faith. I better be, I better be taking big steps of faith. You're supposed to follow me. Of course, some of our people have already made that as their excuse to leave us, but that's fine. That's fine. Amen. They just pre betray the fact that they're of the world, the flesh, and the devil, but they ain't of faith. What's the Bible say about faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 10. The more you get into the word of God and you Amen. take your, that step of faith, start living by faith, the more God can bless you and be real in your life. The more you live by sight, oops, you're in a mess because we're to live by faith and not by sight. 
whatsoever not of faith is sin, the Bible says. So that's it. So when you can always figure it out, you can be sure God's going to let you keep figuring it out. As long as you've got insurance to lean on, God's going to make sure you lean on your insurance. But if you ever get to the day, well, man, it's just me and you, Lord. <laughs> and if I need to go to the hospital, you're going to have to bail me out because I sure ain't got no way. Amen. Well, the Lord will bail you out if you need bailed out. But let me tell you something. If you ain't going to need a miracle, you ain't going to get no money. Put that on and wear it for a while. That's a fact. That's a fact. Amen. Oh, faithless generation. Now, again, I love this because Jesus kind of reveals his heart here. Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now, Jesus, again, he didn't ask the question like he wanted him to answer. He didn't see Peter stepping forward with an answer this time. <laughs> it's a definitely a rhetorical question. And Jesus is letting them know, man, you guys have disappointed me again. You guys can't figure out that I'm going to go to the cross and die in advance. You're going to figure it all out later. So I got to, at least I'm telling you about it now so you remember to put it in the Gospels whenever you write the Bible later. Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Not much longer, Jesus. Just hang in there. Amen. <laughs> Just a few more days. <laughs> How long shall I suffer you? It had to be frustrating for the perfect right. Lord Jesus Christ to even be fooled with these 12 knuckleheads right. that will do great exploits for the Lord, no doubt. Amen. But boy, how many times he'd have to tell them and show them and tell them and show them and tell them and show them until still they couldn't quite get it, you know. <laughs> Bring him unto me. I'll never forget the first time I sat down with Dr. Dixon and he came up here. I wanted him to speak at our church and teach us about this unregistered business and know what we should do, you know, as a church. And uh, before he had ever spoke to the church, I took him over here to Dina's restaurant. We were sitting down at the booth there talking. And he was talking to me, explaining, I'm asking questions. And finally, he just looked at me, this this terrible look. He just looked at me. He stopped and he just looked at me. He back to his chair. He said, you just don't get it, do you? And I looked at him. I said, Dr. Dixon, you're probably right. I'm probably not getting it. But I want to get it. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. That's right. Uh, I don't know. The questions I was asking him must have been uh, getting uh, to me for something. <laughs> so our second point is spiritual immaturity grieves the Lord. We see the faithlessness of men. Amen. And the pitiful condition of a person's need. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. Boy, when this boy got into Jesus' presence, man, immediately that spirit started acting up inside that boy. Now, it's funny sometimes when people come to church, especially if uh, some boys and girls come to church that's never been in church before. Oh, amen. That's right. <laughs> like Jack Chick shows in his comic books, all of a sudden the demons reach over and start pinching little kids' toes, you know, and they're crying and making a scene. Anything to interrupt the service so that people aren't listening to the preacher, you know. That's right. <laughs> amen. Amen. And they just get this boy in Jesus' presence and all of a sudden, yeah, man, that thing's in him. Causes this boy to have a seizure. He's convulsing. And he fell on the ground and wild foaming. Man. It's amazing how the devil always likes to make a big scene. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> Verse 21, the desperate plight of, the, of loved ones. Verse 21, and he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Now this is the most pitiful thing in the world. That sometimes, because again, what is there to hinder a devil from getting into any child? I mean, the child has not reached a level of maturity to know to pray or to call on the Lord or anything else. So this is the most tragic thing that sometimes a child can have a devil. And again, I've even had, like I've told you, missionary people that came through and preached for us in our church that we supported that had trouble like this, and they didn't know how to handle it. They'd ask preachers, and they wouldn't know what to do with them, just hurry them out the door and let them go to the next church. But praise the Lord, we were able to share with them what the Bible says, and they started praying and doing things the way the Bible says, and they got the victory, and they had the victory for their son, and they were so happy. 
And uh, this is the real world. You know, we've told you about one of our ladies that does work, and she's not here much because she's a nanny. And so she's staying in the homes of lost people. And she's come here and visited our church a few times, and she called me on the phone to tell me, Pastor, what am I going to do? You just ain't going to believe how many of these people I've worked with and their children are devil-possessed. Yeah. Well, of course they are. Yeah. you got a lost family. They ain't even acknowledging the Lord. Anything goes on in their lives and in their homes. Well, what's these kids growing up with all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are these kids growing up with, with uh, pornography readily available in their homes and, and, and drugs and everything else and anything else? Because mm -hmm. usually it's a richer set that can afford a nanny anyhow. Right. So you can only imagine what this poor girl's got to go through. And so she asks for some references of things she should, hope she should get and study and so forth. And some of our materials, of course, I made sure uh, to get that to her dad so he could give it to her. Because this is the real world. If there's ever been a time where children were devil possessed, this is it. Yeah. Amen. 2012, 2012, the United States of America, man. Are you kidding me with all these stupid games and evil and wicked crazy things they watch and they they play. I mean, half the things they play just for fun has got cussing and swearing and you know, wicked rap music that's using every kind of four-letter vowel, vowel word right. think of. Amen. Just, right. oh, and yet, and you, you're going to think the kids aren't affected. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. Man, taken captive by the devil at his will, man, says a word, Timothy. Oftentimes, and oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire. So so sad, isn't it? That uh, of a child, this thing had been bothering this boy. Satan attacks the weakest link in the family. Yeah. Parents should guard their children from the subtle attacks mm -hmm. of Satan. The name and the blood of the Lord Jesus should be prayed upon the children for a shield mm -hmm. Amen. of protection. That's right. right. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and remind ourselves. Right. The Bible tells us we should put on the whole armor of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, he didn't say, well, you might not be able to quench them all, so don't pick that girl up and bring her to church no more. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? No, no, he says if we'll take up the shield of faith, we can quench every one of them then. There's no dark that can be coming at us that we can't quench. Amen? Hebrews 9. That's right. If we know our state standing in the Lord, <laughs> we can live a life of victory. Hebrews 9, 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Amen. 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 Again, there's power in the blood, we sing. Would you be free from Amen. the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I believe if a mosquito bites you in the arm, you should go away singing, there's power in the blood. Amen. <laughs> yeah. He might be a new mosquito. Revelation chapter 12. Right. You know, I like to sing those songs over there. There's fire, 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 wonder working fire. Now let's get six in there. There's fire, 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 wonder working fire. Now let's, get, now let's see if we can't uh, get 12 in there. <laughs> and uh, we were singing this down in Kentucky in an open air meeting, in a camp meeting setting. And uh, when the service was over, one of the old, old biddies was heard griping about uh, my song leading to someone else, they said, that young man put too much fire in the blood. <laughs> can, can you put too much fire in the blood? Amen. Oh, that blood, brother. That's what it is. Yeah. Put enough fire in the blood. Amen. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> Revelation 12, 11. Right. And they uh. overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And of course, because it's speaking specifically of getting their heads cut off. That was the death right. that is going to be happening in the future for the saints there in the book of Revelation. So it's so interesting that the Bible speaks to us here and that Jesus is going to reference that the disciples, well, the reason they couldn't get the devil out of that kid was because uh, 
this kind of devil only leaves by praying and fasting. Right. See, now there's two things mentioned. Prayer and fasting. Right. Now, what's yeah. fasting? What's going without food? It's using that time you'd be stuffing yourself usually yeah. to reading your Bible and praying instead. And looking to God for the answers of your needs. And so it's very interesting uh, that this word, that the words and fasting, because and fasting is removed from the new Bibles. Right, yeah. okay. So that people do not no. exercise the spiritual power of prayer and fasting. <coughs> right. I'll show you another good verse, Matthew 17, 21. Amen. Here in Matthew 17, 21, Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Yes. Amen. The New International Perversion and the New World Translation of the Jehovah False Witnesses <laughs> remove the verse in its entirety. Yeah. That's right. The whole verse is missing. Yeah. Why would they take that whole verse out? Because the devil and his scholars do not want people to know the spiritual power of praying and fasting. That's right. Special spiritual power in praying and fasting, and unless you are practicing those two things, sometimes you can tell a devil to leave somebody, and it won't leave. Yeah. That's right. So it's so interesting. Verse twenty-one, and he asked his father, "How long is it ago since this came unto him?" And he said of a child, and oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now I love that here we see a dad identifying with his boy. That's right. He didn't just say, come and help me, Lord, nor did he say, come and help my son. But you don't have to worry about me, I'm okay. <laughs> we see too much of that. Amen. Lord, help us. Yes, amen. Amen. I love that. I think that's so precious. I think that's so precious. Have compassion on us. Help us. I love that. Amen. Number three, we see spiritual immaturity must acknowledge, must be acknowledged to receive the God's blessings. Uh, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. The Bible again emphasizes this importance of exercising faith. Amen. Because he that come to God must believe that he is, and he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. That's why Hebrews 11 is so important to understand what the Bible says about living by faith. So it's acknowledged by faith, and it's acknowledged by humility, and by crying to the Lord for help. Verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out, said with tears. Oh, I love that, because again, we're seeing some of those. Yeah three marks of repentance in a person's life. You know, they acknowledge the need. That's good to have an assent to the need intellectually. But even he's reached the point that emotionally, mm -hmm. amen, he's showing a difference. Amen. And he's using his will to go God's way. Amen. Straightway the father of the child cried out, said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Isn't that precious? That's one of my favorite verses. Because <laughs> so I've had to say the same thing many a time. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah. Amen, brother. That's right. I know I'm not everything I'm supposed to be. I know I'm lacking. The devil that comes along and puts fear into my heart and mind. Yeah. And you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but power of loving us all mine, like you said there in 2 Timothy 1 7. So, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Amen. 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 And when Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. There it is, see? Isn't that something? Uh huh. It was referred to as a dumb spirit because that's how it seemed to manifest. So often, if you do have an occasion to talk to somebody, you're learning that you can properly address the spirit by what it's manifesting in the individual person. But notice what it was. Though it manifests itself so that it appeared to be a dumb spirit causing the boy not to, not to be able to speak. The Bible lets us know here. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. That this was actually caused by a foul spirit. Right. Mm. 
Say it in. Thou dumb and deaf spirit. All right. I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. So maybe the boy was just good at reading lips. They thought he could hear, but maybe he could. Because now Jesus even gives us more insight and says it's a it's a dumb and deaf spirit. See that? Amen. And notice how he uses uh, what we would call a legal term, which is very interesting too when you're full of this realm. That uh, it's best to use very direct wording. You know, if you if you were to go to court, you're going on charges. <laughs> I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried out. And rent him so. I mean, there was a great convulsion there and came out of it and was as one dead. The word seems perfectly still. I've told you the story of one of my ladies over in Pennsylvania in my church. It was up in years. She was always hearing voices all the time. It really bothered her. And I was just uh, figuring it's arteriosclerosis because I knew her a lot of her history as an old West Virginia hillbilly gal hanging around them saloons uh, over life. Uh, but it got so bad one day that her sister said, Preacher, come over here and pray over my sister. Something, something, needs, something needs to happen here. And I said, Okay. So I went over and visited with her and talked to her. I said, Well, I'm going to pray for you now. So I took her by the hand. I prayed over her. And nothing happened. It was right after supper time, one of my problems. And, uh, I talked to her after I prayed with her. I said, are you here still hearing them voices? She said, yeah. I said, well, the truth is I ain't been doing no fasting because I didn't know I was coming over here tonight. So I tell you what I'll do. I'm going to go home now. I ain't going to eat nothing all night. And in the morning, I'm going to come see you again in the morning when I've done some fasting. So we'll see what happens. So I didn't eat nothing. Just kept at it, praying and fasting, you know, all evening and the next morning got up and went back to her house to see her and took her by the hand, prayed over again. Mm -hmm. Now I'm praying and fasting, right? I said, well, you still hear them voices? She said, yeah. I said, well, that's all right. Because I've been praying and I've been fasting and if there's a devil causing this, something's going to happen. See, there's another verse that says, and in that hour. Right. See, there's always another verse. <laughs> Amen. You got to know where they are. The rest of the story. I said, so uh, I got to get home. I got a missionary coming by the house today because he's going to preach for Sunday. This was on Saturday. I said, so I'm going to go home because he's going to be coming by. But now if anything happens, you let me know. Sure enough, I hadn't been home an hour, man. That phone's ringing. Her sister's calling. Brother Dan. Yeah. She just fell over on the floor. Oh, good. She's at the hospital. Oh, good. I said, well, the missionary's here. I'm going to take him over. We're going to go see her. So sure enough, we went over to the hospital to see her. And the Brother Clinton Smith was with me, and he was going to be a missionary to China. And that's just about a land full of spirits. That's the land. And I said, boy, I'm so glad you're here. I said, I want you to go with me. We're going to go talk to this lady. I told her a little bit of her story. Oh, it's so beautiful. I wish you could have been with me. Because as soon as we went, walked through that room, she could look you in the eye. Yeah. Before that, when she looked at you, her eyes were just dark and all over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she couldn't hold. She couldn't hold a steady gaze looking at you. So awful. Mm -hmm. She's perfectly relaxed. She could look you in the eye and talk to you with no problem at all. Talking to her. I said, "Well, are you hear them voices? No, I don't hear no voices no more." Amen. 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 So we began to talk a little bit. Then after a while, she she confided in me. She said. She said, one of the things that voice kept saying was, so it kept saying the name Rasputin. Yeah. She said, what? She said, I've never heard of that, that name Rasputin. Does that name mean anything to you, preacher? I said, yes, it does. <laughs> I said, but there's nothing to concern yourself with. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but she had the victory. Amen. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, uh, so we're learning a lot here about dealing with uh, evil spirits, amen. Mm -hmm. 
So sure enough, he had a seizure, fell over the floor. I've told you about one young man in our church in Kentucky. He, uh, he hadn't seen this girl since he graduated high school. And one day, uh, he'd run out of gas or something, and he went knocking on the door of the house and just trying to get some gas from somebody. When you're living in Kentucky, like I said, you're miles from civilization. And he said, this girl met him at the door, somebody he went to high school with. Right away, she started telling him things he'd been doing that nobody would know but him. And he was backslid. He, he'd been saved, but he got away from the Lord. He was doing a lot of things he shouldn't have been doing as a Christian. And uh, this lady started telling him things he'd been doing that he knew only the devil knew and the Lord knew. He said, man, I knew this girl had to be devil-possessed. I said, well, what did you do? He said, I cast the devil out of her. I said, well, good for you. You know, most Christians <laughs> wouldn't even know how to do that. And I said, well, good for you. <laughs> I said, what happened? He said, well, I prayed over her. I prayed for her. I prayed the devil would leave her. And sure enough, just like the Bible says, she had a convulsion and fell over the floor. I said, then what did you do? He said, I got out of there as fast as I could. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. That sounds like what a carnal Christian should do. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, it's so interesting. This fellow, he, had this, he fell over. He seems to be dead. Amen. And Jesus took him by the hand. There we go. And lifted him up. And he rose. I can just imagine that boy probably looked pretty pale. I don't know. But boy, once Jesus took him by the hand. Man, he was able to rise up on his feet. I can see the color coming back in his cheeks. Amen. He rose. Amen. Mm. If he was dead, he rose now. <laughs> Amen. Number four, and lastly, spiritual immaturity can con can be conquered. And spiritual power is available. Amen. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately. Now, God bless these dear disciples. See, they weren't standing. Now, Jesus, we got a question for you. I mean, by now they've learned it. If right. we're asking questions, it's probably because we're stupid. So let's do it privately. <laughs> let's not let everybody know how stupid we are. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for some Christians that had some maturity about them. Learn not to go visiting and say, well, I want to tell you what I think about that preacher. Did you hear that time? He or whatever. Amen. Amen. You know who they are. I know who they are. We know who they are. That's how they do things. And Thank God for somebody with some spiritual maturity. Ask him privately. Why could not we cast him out? <laughs> Amen. Right. And that's always where you can get something done with God, my friend. That's right. You know, you can stand up here and pray if we ask you to pray. And that's right. You might sound pretty good to us. But where do you really get it done? Is in your home. Right. right. And like Jesus said, you know what? You need to even get in the closet once in a while. You got to get alone with God, man. That's right. Amen. If you want God to do something, you got to get alone with God. You got to seek the Lord. Amen. 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 You need to get with him privately. Put it all on the altar. Amen. Why could not we cast him out? Uh -huh. And he said unto them, This kind. Again, there's, again, there's different right. kinds. That's yeah, the right. point we're trying Keyword. to make here. So we're learning some things about the spirit world. That there are many different right. kinds. Some are very pious and religious. Some are very clean. Maybe even fanatical on clean. Right. <laughs> and there's some foul spirits. Amen. Yeah, this is mentioned here. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So that's where the powerhouse is. Amen. David said, I have chastened my soul with fasting. There's something about fasting that gives you more spiritual power in your prayer life. Yes. Amen. So let's have faith. Amen. Let's not be unbelieving, but let's not be faithless, but let's be faithful. Amen. And let's be people of prayer. And let's do without some food once in a while. Amen. And take some time to pray and fast. I think of that funeral we had in Bruce. And now Tanya was so faithful to come for years to church. She'd been saved 12 years ago. And to come so regular to church every time she could come. And yet her husband was lost for, you know, 11 of those 12 years. And then, praise the Lord, he finally got saved. But it took cancer. Amen. It took him being in a wheelchair for the last year of his life. But he was saved, and he knew the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he let me know. He said, Preacher, now it's our church. Wow. 
wow. Remember the first time he visited our church, I knew that that wasn't going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> he was born and raised a Catholic. Man, I think he kind of resented his wife getting saved. But he's seen enough change in her. He knew it was for the better. Amen. 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 And we prayed, amen. I, I can't tell you how many hundreds of prayers I prayed, and I'm sure many of you did too. And what a great to finally see that day. Amen. And he humbled himself and called on the Lord. And uh, that was a blessing.